Hi, my name is Chris Watling. I'm the Associate Dean for Postgraduate Medical Education at Schulich. And in November of this year, we have uh, the accreditation site visit for all of our postgraduate programs, all of our residency programs in specialties and in family medicine, and also our uh, areas of focus competence diploma programs. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the accreditation process, what it's for, how it works, and uh, why it's so important to us. Well, accreditation is a continuous quality improvement process. I think historically people have tended to think of accreditation as a, a kind of a judgment, a judgment of the value of a program, a judgment of the value of a program director. There's been a real shift toward the idea of continuous quality improvement and toward thinking of the accreditation visit as actually just one piece of a larger process that also includes things like our own internal reviews and all of the work that we do in between accreditation visits to try to maintain and improve the quality of programs. Well, uh, everything is new since 2012. Um, the general idea of accreditation isn't new, but over the last um, year or so, we have new standards in place, and we'll be one of the first schools that's going to be accredited based on all of those new standards. There's a new set of standards for each individual program, and then a new set of standards for the institution itself. Another thing that's new is that the institution is going to get a status of accreditation. Always we've had each individual program assigned a status of accreditation. This time, for the first time, the institution itself also will get a status. And we think that's going to be helpful in terms of really pushing the continuous improvement efforts of the institution as well. And then finally, there's a new process for accreditation. Everything's been digitized, so now we have an online accreditation management system. And instead of completing forms, and then sending in Word documents with all of their information. Programs are completing an evergreen online profile. It's a lot of work up front, but what it's going to do is create a living profile of the program that they can just update in little pieces over time, and hopefully that's going to reduce work down the line. So when the programs are accredited, what's going to happen is uh, this is all going to occur over a single week in November. And there'll be a large team, probably of about 30 people, representing the two certifying and accrediting colleges, the College of Family Physicians of Canada and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. And during the week that they're here, uh, each program will have a day, and in the case of a couple of our large programs, two days, where a team will visit the program and really get to know the program, talk to uh, all of the important players in the program and really come to an understanding of how well the program is doing um, compared to the standards that have been set for programs. And then concurrent with that, there'll be a second team that does the same with the institution. And they'll talk to all of those people that are involved in kind of the global overall management of residency training at Schulich to get a picture of how well the institution is doing in terms of its role in supporting residency training. That's all going to be completed between Monday and Thursday of that week and then we'll get a quick exit visit on the Friday where we'll get a, a kind of a heads up about how all of the programs and how the institution did and some early uh, view on the kinds of recommendations that they're likely to make. Following the on-site visit, there is a, a process of reviewing the reports that are created. So all of those team members, the review team members, are going to go away and complete specific reports, reports on each individual program and then a report on the institution itself. Our programs will get those reports a few weeks later and they'll have a chance to make corrections if there's any errors, uh, factual errors, uh, in the reports. And then subsequent to that, the reports will go to what are called the specialty committees, those national committees representing each individual specialty across the country, and they get a chance to review them and to weigh in with questions and comments. And then finally, and it's not going to happen until May of 2020, uh, all of those reports will be reviewed by the National Residency Accreditation Committees of the two colleges, the Royal College and the College of Family Physicians. Only then will a final status of accreditation be um, uh, conferred on the programs and on the institution because those are the decision-making bodies. And although we'll have a sense at the end of the week of what those decisions are likely to be, Every time I've been involved in the national discussions, a few of those decisions change. So really it's not going to be until May of 2020 that we get the, the final verdict. 
if I can leave you with one message about accreditation, uh, it's that accreditation is a lot of work uh, for the people involved. It's a lot of work for the review team, but it's a terrific amount of work for programs and for program directors. And I remember from my own time as a program director that accreditation is both incredibly meaningful and incredibly stressful for program directors. So my advice would be to give your programs, your program directors, and your program administrators as much help as you can. They'll be asking for information. They'll be asking people to come to meetings. They'll be trying to give people a heads up on what to expect at meetings. And so participate with them, engage with them, help them however you can. It's going to make their job easier and it'll make the accreditation go much more smoothly.